and we are back. It is the VG Challenge here at Balance Hatch. I am Solex Cross, and I'm joined here by my boy. Jake and Baker. there it is. <laughs> and we are here in round three, baby. And we got a cool couple of kids over yeah. here playing. A good favorite, a vet. I guess he's not a kid at that point. Muhammad versus a new player here, I believe by the name of Jamal Burke. So it's going to be an interesting show for us today. Vets versus the newbies. We're going to see how that shakes out. Yeah, and, and they definitely have some really interesting teams. Uh, yes, and I don't say yes. that interesting to be like, oh, this is really weird and I don't get it. These are just some interesting Pokemon that maybe don't shine as often, but definitely have a place. They definitely have their niche, and they're certainly strong in their own right, and I'm curious to see how these trainers will use those Pokemon to their fullest. It's actually quite interesting that you bring it up, because the first thing I noticed is that Mousehold is by themselves here. No, no Annihilate. Very well, interesting. No Mousehold is ever by itself. No, oh, that's true. <laughs> they are always a family of three or four. United Strong. <laughs> <laughs> United Strong. But, uh, yeah, there's nothing to really combo with that Mousehold. You know, Golden Go doesn't have Nasty Plot. There's no uh, Duraludon that you want to side beat up. There's no uh, Annihilate that you want to side beat up. It's definitely an interesting pick here, and I mean, it may work. I mean, follow me is never a bad thing, right? No, it it's not, and neither is a Super Fang if it does half your health with all that extra bulk you could possibly have, Absolutely. which might be a little important later as we get into the next team. But here we are with the next team, Muhammad <laughs> with Art Alvon Grimstar, and there are those double reflect light screen light clay. It's just such a strong ability to have with a Duraldon, with, of course, the Assault Vest. It is just a lot of bulk and that super thing might be what we need to see here yeah so uh, another thing to shout out here is there was no mouse hole or there is mouse hole on the other team and we were saying you know maybe our chaladon maybe annihilate would be good with that <laughs> and we look at this and we have our chaladon and annihilate here <laughs> with Worst. nothing that can beat them up but Grimmsnarl, you know protecting it and no follow me that <laughs> vidion doesn't even have rage powder it's very confusing to see, uh -huh. but again, I'm sure these teams function really well. I see a lot of power on this team. I see the Politoed with Archaladon, Politoed with Tauros, and Politoed uh, also with the Vivion yes. to get those perfectly accurate Hurricanes. Uh, notably, it's a Friend Guard Vivion. Friend Guard, yes. Very unique. Not something you see quite often at all. No, really. usually, even when Vivion are coming up nowadays, they're usually those compound eyes with that 97.5 accurate Sleep Powder and 91% accurate Hurricanes, as well as Rage Powder. But this one opting just for Pollen Puff, Tailwind, and Hurricane. Um, so definitely some different approaches from these two trainers, and I, I really want to see how they pay off. In terms of matchup, I mean, it looks pretty even Steven. Um, it, Rain gets pretty counteracted by like a Dragonite, yes, um, yes. Kilowattra with Tailwind, because Muhammad doesn't actually, oh, he does have Tailwind and Vivion, I apologize. Um, but could take that out before that Vivion can even move with uh, faster Pokemon of priority attacks. I also got to shout out the Toad on the team. Man, we got something so unique in our weather setting here that isn't seen commonly uh, by today's standard. But Politoed notorious for its bulk, which is what Muhammad expressed to me before the match began, is that he wants this team to feel very stocky. Yeah. We want to be able to weather any storm our opponent brings to us, pun intended, with weather. But <laughs> here we go into the match. Let's check it out. Jamal versus Muhammad. Yeah, so we're going to see a lead of Mousehold and Golden Girl. Um, not an uncommon pairing to see as we see Grimmsnarl and Archaladon, a very, very good pairing together. Um, however, you know, Grimmsnarl can get up those screens to protect yes. the, uh, Ar Archaladon, yes. um, make it so it's not taking that much damage. But crucially here, the Mousehold can just throw out Super Fangs, which aren't affected by those screens whatsoever. Not can just though. do 50% yep. whenever he wants either of these Pokemon. Mousehold also carrying the Tonk to shut down Grimstrong for a while. Um, and, you know, Golden Goal on the other side looking very good offensively. So I curious. gotta imagine this Mousehold is gonna be targeting this Duraldon too with the Assault Vest and Screen. He's gonna have so much book. As we see Light Screen's going up to defend against this Goldengo Menace, but here goes the Super Fang, rightfully so, into Arc Aladon. There goes 50% of that health, but we're gonna get a defense boost for the troubles. Shadow Ball going also to Duraludon, but this is gonna be taken pretty decently. That's a low HP there on the first turn. Already getting an insane amount of value, but now a Snarl going into Goldengo gonna decrease the, the stats here. 
All right, so a lot happened that turn. I mean, our Shaladon took the majority of its HP. Yes. It's down to less than 20%, I believe, or less than 25%. Um, with that Super Fang doing 50%, the Shadow Ball with the Assault Vest, with the Light Screen, still doing a good chunk. Able to get our, our Shaladon down below 25% HP, and it looks like another Shadow Ball could just KO his mouthful here to easily do some damage to that Crimson Roll, maybe get that Taunt off. Um, but Snarl did come out on yes, Golden Go, very so important. what I just said of Archaladon getting KO'd by that Shadow Ball may not hold may true not anymore hold. at minus yeah. one. Minus one being the huge... Oh, but we're going to pivot out here. <laughs> this time that the, the offensive boost is no, not going to be enough with whether that's more. Bring it in this Polytope for that Drizzle ability here. Might bring a, a decent amount, but Super Fang again into the same slot! No way! No way! Okay, that will trigger the Citrus Berry, but what a good read! Of course, Super Fang going into the same spot probably wouldn't have been too bad if the Shadow Ball was coming, right? But which it is. Oh, Poison took that really well, actually. Yeah, and that's Spear Frick going into the Golden Bill. Gonna drop its special attack one more stage, and now it's half, at half of the initial, uh, special attack it had from the start of this game. Polyco coming in there, trained perfectly such that that uh, HP stat is even, so that Super Fang will bring it down to exactly half and trigger that Citrus Berry. Uh, and after a Shadow Ball, gonna stay above 50% of its HP. Now Polyco's looking to do a good amount of damage with uh, Weather Balls or slow to tie the battle with Icy Wind. And Grimstrom there hasn't taken any hits. Um, and has just thrown out a spear break, got a light screen up. It could get reflect up anytime it wants, but you know, facing down these two Pokemon, which can't threaten physical damage, even though Super, cause Super Fangs hate fixing yeah. out of damage, is not that necessary. And and um, Muhammad recognizing that, knowing that this Golden Gold Lock is a Shadow Ball, uh, he doesn't need to be worried about its offense. Yeah, of course, and I do see the Gold Dangle switching out here. I expected that because the Trace Specs and all those debuffs. Not to get the value you want out of that Pokemon, so you've got to take it out if you want to hold some kind of value for it later in the game. But this now opens up your watch roll to get destroyed by some damage here, but luckily it was just the Icy Wind, which is going to do a significant portion of damage here and slow it down just a little bit. Yeah, so slow it down it will, but power it up it will as well because of this Kilowatt's ability. Competitive going to give it that double king to its special attack now. Uh, had Grimstrong gone for a Spirit Break there as well, yeah, it would have taken a lot of damage. But that uh, Kilowatt will be at three stages yes, of yes. increased special attacks. And um, I know Kilowattrals are very fast. I don't know how fast this Polytoad is. I don't know how fast this Grimstarl is. But I would wager a guess that even at minus one speed, this Kilowattral is probably the fastest thing on the field. Absolutely. It is extremely threatening, especially now that you brought in this Polytoad, who is of that water typing, unless we use a Terra here. It could be a good strategy to go for a Terra, maybe give us a, a strong water move into Kilowattral. But if I remember correctly, looking over at this Polytoad, Oh, we have Weather Ball. Okay, so we can at least get a really nice strong stab into that one. But, but here comes a Terrestrialization into Polytoad as, as predicted, into the Fire Typing. Okay, I like that. Yeah, so the Fire Toad comes out. And uh, <laughs> again, not going to expect anything but Kilowattrol to go first here. As a follow me from Mousehold comes out, going to want Kilowattrol not to take damage. As Thunderbolt goes out with the Grimstrol at Doubled special attack behind that light screen is going to be enough to get the two hit knockout as Weather Ball into the Mouse Hold does take it out thanks to that rain boost and the uh, same type of attack as bonus. Mouse Hold is down. Spear Break going to go into the Kilowatt Hold. Is going to drop its special attack by one. No, it won't. It will just drop its HP to zero. Whoa, I did not expect that to get a knockout here just like that. And now suddenly Jamal on the back end. Down two Pokemon, bring in a Goldango, and of course, Dragon Knight in the back, which is going to be an interesting choice here. Dragon Knight is going to have that flying Terra type, of course, we still haven't seen a Terra from Jamal's side here. So that is the option with Terra Blast, and of course, it has extreme speed as well, which is a powerful priority move. Even if you get hit by a straight Icy Wind of sorts, you still have that capability to dish out some big damage anyway. Yeah. So, really, really good shout there, uh, that Jamal has kept his Terra for this game. So that Dragonite with the Terra Flying Terra Blast is probably going to be his target here. Crucially also, getting rid of that weakness to Fairy and that double weakness to Ice. Absolutely. Um, I would be shocked here not to see a KO from Jamal's side into Muhammad's here. 
but with those screens up, uh, it's gonna be a tough job. These Pokemon are gonna have to get some strong, strong attacks off if they wanna do it. Yes, Light Clay does extend the amount of time that these abilities have in play, so it could possibly last the entire duration of this entire match. Most of these games being only a few turns, but wow, the Make It Rain gonna go ahead and get Grimstar here. Barito on its last legs, are we gonna see a double knockout? Is the question here it comes the Terra Blast, and it's gonna do. Yeah, there's no way Polito lives this even with screens, right? Yeah, and there goes a double knockout here for Jamal. Still showing some signs of life in this game. Yeah, so I, I think the big thing here is we know our challenge on that, but it's very, very mm -hmm. low mm -hmm. HP, and we do see that annihilate now. So the question is. Which of these Pokemon is faster? Is it the Archaladon or is it the Dragonite? It's also going to be interesting to see what Annihilate decides to do here. There's no setup for this Annihilate, no side targets as we mentioned earlier, so are we going to be able to have the time to spend powering up this Annihilate in the face of a flying Terra Dragonite with Terra Blast? I'm yeah. not certain. And now I'm curious, can Dragonite's extreme speed plus the minus one Vex Golden Go make it rain take out that Archaladon before it can move? Um, if not, our Chaladon could probably throw around a lot of damage into these Pokemon, uh, especially with an Electro Shot into the Dragonite. Well, we do know that there is some time left on that light screen, so we're gonna have to see here a resistance extreme speed. Well, there was no lock in for extreme speed. We did not see that go first. And we also see a stamina boost here, so what is gonna be Terra Blast? Ooh. Gonna just knock out this Annihilate? Oh no, into Duraludon! Interesting! And survival! What an interesting decision! And now the stamina boost going up again. This means we will get an attack. Rage Race coming out here. Oh! A big critical hit into this Dragonite with the Electric Shot. Are we just gonna get rid of this Dragonite here? The rain is still up, so we will see this move come out right now. Special attack going up again. And it is going right into this Dragonite for the two hits and getting that clean knockout. Arc Aladon showing us just what kind of stuff it's made of. It's tough, of course, and gonna be able to weather that storm. And now, we're in a precarious position with this Goldango at minus one. Despite having specs, it could still be enough to get a significant KO. But Annihilate, is it gonna be enough? A spread attack? Oh. Yeah, so I'm very curious what was going through Jamal's head there. Uh, going for the Terra Blast, which not very effective into the Archaladon. Yeah, it's boosted by Terra and the same type of attack bonus. Uh, but having Low Kick available, I think Low Kick would have been able to get those yes, extra 4 yes. HP off on Archaladon. Uh, even though it's not the heaviest of Pokemon, it would have been super effective, uh, and it probably would have picked up the KO. Uh, so curious why Jamal locked into that, uh, maybe thinking, oh, if I get the KO onto our Chaladon, I need to hit this uh, Terra Flying Terra Blast. Or maybe thinking, I'm not even going to outspeed, I shouldn't even bother, I'm throwing in the towel. Uh, but I think Jamal had a lot to learn out of that last turn, uh, just in terms of knowing those speed orders. Yes, um, absolutely. The Dragonite is faster than both Annihilate, and uh, the Archaladon, which naturally outspeed it. Yes, yes. Uh, there's a one more issue with this, though. Jamal now has to factor in that Muhammad is going to be thinking about Super Fang earlier on. Yep. That was such a huge turn for Jamal to capitalize on, just doing 50% to that Duraludon and making it very vulnerable to some attacks. Not a mistake I think Muhammad is going to let happen twice. No. Uh, I, I think Jamal played that well leading up to those last or that last turn i will say i think jamal did have a sealed win given that we know the speed orders now um i think jamal learned a lot i think uh muhammad probably knew more that he's leaning into bulk that he might get out sped here but we know that that dragonite's fast enough now there was no tailwind up no icy winds were out um so we're gonna have to see i, I think muhammad is the one that actually needs to make more adjustments i think jamal played that well, to 99%, yes. uh, but just couldn't close it out. Um, so I, I think this is absolutely Jamal's game to lose. Uh, it was his game to win there and just uh, just miss the mark. We'll see how it goes into this game. It's too. also interesting because you do have to consider that stamina boost from the Goldango after using Make It Rain. And I, I guess Jamal just did not see that as in that moment. Maybe, yeah. maybe Low Kick didn't do enough, right? But mm -hmm. how how heavy is the Raldon really? I think it's pretty heavy, it's right? It's an 80 base power low kick. I know that. It has to be, right? It so is. 
maybe that would have just been enough to clear that out and then of course annihilate you could have just neutralized that threat entirely with with your dragonite right yeah. so ugh, it's tough to say but here we go into game two we're gonna see how the players adjust after that really really tough game one and let's just check out these leads okay mammal swine making an appearance here that's what i like to see i love me some mammal swine and oh big changes both players okay we kept one on, but Mammoth Swine and Toros both making an appearance onto the stage. I like it. I like it. Yeah, so Mammoth Swine pretends it does not see it. It does not know <laughs> that this Toros is intimidating. Uh, and Mammoth Swine able to keep its attack intact here. However, extremely threatened by that Aqua Breed Toros. Yes. Uh, wave Crash and Close Combat. You know, Mammoth Swine, a Pokemon known very well for its uh, double typing offensively. Um, However, also known as really bad defensively. And also, we do have to factor in that this Mamma Swine does not have Protect. Extremely vulnerable to whatever this Taurus does. Does this first force a first switch right now? Yeah, not and it looks that. like it will. And not only that, but the Mamma Swine's uh, Terra type is an offensive one, but that Ice typing, not one that's going to help it out in this match. Oh. That's going to have to go right into the Dragonite that resists these attacks so well. If Muhammad called that and went for a potential Spear Break here, that would be very, very strong. But probably just wanting to get uh, those uh, Reflex or Light Screens up. Most likely a Light Screen, given that we have a Golden Go with Choice Packs on the field. It wants to survive this turn. So, uh, gonna terastalize away from that shield weakness and get up a light screen so that the Tauros Aqua Breed will be freer to do it once. Oh, 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 I like this trick. A very, very good trick target here in the form of this Grimmsnarl. Now we can't just prankster priority press whatever we want. We gotta play with a little bit more respect. And of course, Wave Clash just doing negligible amounts of damage to this Dragonite. Now that it is a resist. I do like the change in terror earlier on for his Grimmsnarl, predicting a make it rain from this Goldango definitely would have been able to survive that, especially after a light screen would have been a really good call. But Jamal was well disciplined enough to understand what the circumstances were and made the appropriate choices. Yeah, so now that those choice specs are on that Grimmsnarl, uh, it made its move already, so I don't believe it's choice lock on this. Not yet, it's not free yet. to make a move here. If it wants to go for a spear break, it can. If it wants to go for a reflect, it can. Uh, Golden Ghost still pressuring a lot of damage. And Dragonite uh, threatening that Terra Flying Terra Blast that could easily knock out Tauros. But a perfect switch in here into the Archaladon uh, is going to keep it very, very safe and give it the stamina boost if that is the move that Jamal wants to go for. Shadow Ball being locked in will do times two damage. Does have stab. It's going to do over 50% to this Grimmsnarl. Ice Spinner coming out as well. Going to take out the Grimmsnarl. No! It's still here. Still doing its thing with the Spirit Break. It's going to be huge. A knockout into the Dragon Knight here with the critical hit. That's what I like to see. Okay. That was probably not the best decision here, <laughs> but <laughs> this is this is insane. That was a great call with the Shadow Ball going, trying to get that double into the Scrimstar, but Muhammad prays for this situation. He trained this here Grimstar to weather the storm between any kinds of attacks, especially with the screens up. This is this is right on brand for what he wants. Yeah, so Grimstar now locked into that Spirit Break might be fine for it he might want to switch it out in yeah. favor to get a reflect yeah. later on in this game um but i think jamal here not going for that terra flying terra blast i yes. think a little short-sighted thinking oh or uh, or maybe uh thinking long-term thinking oh that tauros can come in later and wave crash me i need to save that resistance but not thinking oh i need that offensive output right here and i'm not sure what other pokemon on his team really wants to Terra as much as this Dragonite. You know, we have a Terra Ice Mammoth Swine, the Kilowattles go so it can't get faked out, but that's not something that you have to worry about. And the Golden Go having Terra Steel, if it was going for Big Make It Rains, yeah, that would be important. Uh, but it hasn't been doing that yet. Oh, that's some huge damage going into this Polyfill, but again, trained to be very bulky. It's gonna take that relatively nicely. And now this trick going in again. Oh man, now our Galadon just got the soul vest taken away but electro shot this is gonna be an instant hit because of that weather and now we will see what it does in terms of damage special attack going up by one stage and here we go is it okay okay no that's a respectable amount of damage more than 50 percent hey we'll take that 
Yeah, so interesting thing that's going on right now. Golden Go has an Assault Vest. Not an item you usually see on it. No, not at all. While it is going to be gaining that special defense boost, it's no longer able to trick away its item, so it's locked with that Assault Vest the rest of the game unless there's some way of removing it that we don't know about. Oh, uh, maybe we've unlocked the secret strats here. Maybe Assault Vest Goldango is the move. Let's see what happens. There's only special attacks coming out from Muhammad's side here, and it's already, they're not necessarily the most trained in terms of special offensive power. They're trained for defensive bulk, right? So maybe this Goldango might be able to stay on the board a little bit longer to put on some pressure. Yeah, the way I'm seeing this is M Muhammad has very few ways to lose this game. There's a Tauros in the back that can rip through everything, everything. on the team. Ooh. As long as Kilowattrel is able to go down oh, um, oh, and Muhammad's able to take it down, um, this Paldean Tauros is pretty free to take out Mamoswine, uh, do great damage to Golden Go. As an Electro Shot is going to come out here, uh, not sure which slot it's going to target. If it goes into that Golden Go, it's going to be able to pick up the KO as we saw from last turn. But we do see it going to the Kilowattle, it's going to bring it down to that Focus Act, as Politoed is going to be the next Pokemon to move, I believe. And if it's going for an Icy Wind, it can get a good K Oh, just going for a Weather Mold, not wanting to mess with that 95% accuracy. Weather Mold going into that Kilowattle, and as I said, paving the way for that Bulldozer. Yes, Mamoswine coming in with this enhanced speed, thanks to the Tailwind. It's going to be a very, very big turn here. Didn't get a knockout with that Wallatro, Killatro, but it's it's here now that this Mamoswine is threatening such a big board position. And of course, if Mamoswine does go for Earthquake, Godango doesn't have a way to defend against that. So you can't really go for that and get a double knockout here, but you do have high horsepower. So that is a single target. Earth move that you can just go ahead and do a decent amount of damage into this Argalodon, but is it going to be able to do the job? That's the question here, right? Yeah, I think a single target life orb high horsepower into Argalodon is probably enough for a KO, especially since that reflect is up and it can't be intimidated. But the question is, if you leave Politoed alive yes. here, because I don't believe a Shadow Ball is enough, light screen's up. Um, if you don't go for that Earthquake here, I don't think you're able to pick up the KO on the Politoed. But Tauros is just going to switch in here, not going to get an Intimidate off onto the Mamoswine, as we know. Uh, and Golden Go going to be able to get some good damage out, while Mamoswine's going to get a free attack, as we do see a Terra fight. Okay, Terra coming in here. What's it going to be? It's on this Mamo. Is it going to be? It's Fire Typing. Oh, I don't know if I like that. I mean, we go from ground to fire, you're still weak to this water element. What is it that we're trying to fight against? Shadow Ball coming into this? Well, definitely gonna live this one. For sure. Politoed, very bulky here. High host into the Politoed! Okay! Guaranteed this knockout here! Yeah, so, uh... uh this Mamoswine having the Terra Fire not what we were informed of. We're gonna have to check on that. Um... But, uh... That doesn't change things too much given that Tauros has uh, water attacks to go into this Mamoswine. Um, so we'll see what happens here. Yes, now we're gonna see this wave crash try to go into these slots. We do see Godango throwing out these these pretty powerful Shadow Balls in, but now we have a resist on the field. It could take out Grimstone, but is gonna put up some reflex or something obnoxious before it goes down. Yep. Uh, you know, I've been saying, I think this Tauros is pretty free to get this game over with. Although, it should be noted that there is a Tailwind up on Jamal's side of the field. So, Mamoswine and Golden Goat are going to be faster. Grimstrong going to be able to get that Reflect up thanks to that last minute switch out before it went down. Just getting that print to Reflect. And we see a Shadow Ball going to that Tauros and a high horsepower going to the Not Tauros. enough. Not enough to get the KO as a Wave Crash is going to go into this Mamoswine and pick up the KO. And that's a other one down. Now it's all up to this lonesome Goldango with an Assault Vest and Shadow Ball. It's not It's not enough. There's three other Pokemon on this other side of the team. Oh wait! Tauros went down! Yep. Okay, hold on. Maybe. Nah, this Arcaladon has way too much HP. <laughs> it's way too stocky. I am built for this. And yeah, that's that's cute scene right there. Yeah. Unfortunately, we always, uh, we we can't always switch want to there. be hopeful. Yeah, <laughs> we but, always uh, want to be hopeful, sure. Archaladon with that assault vest 
Uh, no, no long with the assault vest with the light clay with the light screen up and Golden Go not with the choice specs, not looking to be able to get a KO into the Arch on here. That is doing uh, a small, That's, small what, four KO, to what maybe. Evan Electric Shot is going to go into the Golden Go here. And we did see last time this was able to do more than 50%. If it's able to do 50% here, it is going to be uh, game set and match. If not, uh, Shadow Ball's going to need a really nice. big crit to win. <laughs> really? Uh, I don't even know if the crit can do it, honestly. But it would have to be a really big crit. But either way, Muhammad takes the dub here. Excellent game to both players, especially for Jamal, who is new to our scene, which yeah. is awesome. Well played game, excellent match. What do you think? I think uh, Jamal definitely took the right approach to the games and made a few misplays that easily could have set him places ahead. Um, in that game one, we did see the uh, Terra Blast instead of the low kick into our Chaladon, where it would have picked up the KO and would have sealed up the game. In this game two, we didn't see the Terrasalization as a Spirit Break just took out Dragonite, which was a key member Very to important. defeating this Very strong rain team. Especially with a Tauros yes, uh, that yes. you want to be able to hit with that Terra Flying Terra Blast. So I think Jamal definitely with a very cool team, making a few misplays that kept him out of the winning here. But I have faith that if he moves on, uh, we'll be able to get those messages and figure it all out. For sure. I think he's pretty hot right now. Yeah. Two wins, one loss. There's still a chance to make top eight, and we would like to see him later down the line. But that's going to be the end for our round three. And we're going to catch you all later. Stay tuned.